Ottawa trails by three. Montreal battling back. It's Saturday. Kevin Bieksa and Jennifer Bottero. Kelly Rudy with analysis of the games coming up shortly. But first, uh, Kevin left some stuff here. Let's <laughs> right. get rid of that. Okay. Saturday headlines, Elliot. Uh, listen, a scary moment for Steve Kazari. Uh, there is good news on that front. Uh, and you also have a couple of injury. Miko Renton and got dinged last night against Edmonton. And then Thatcher Demko update. So this was earlier today. A completely fluke play. Hayden Fleury and Steve Kazari colliding. It was really scary in the moment. Fleury left the game. Kazari was taken off on a stretcher. Now, the, the key thing is here is he does grab the hands of Kyle Flemington, so he kind of knew in the moment that he was okay. The NHL said he was, will make a full recovery. He was supposed to officiate Detroit Buffalo tomorrow. He won't. He'll have some time off, obviously. But again, the prognosis is good. Everything now precautionary. He does a lot for the NHL in the playoffs. He's done four Stanley Cup finals. Last night, Edmonton played its best game of the year, beating Colorado 6-2. to two. But one of the biggest developments was Matthias Ekholm had two big hits on Mikko Rantanen the second of which knocked Rantanen out of the game. Now, the Avalanche were off today. They play at home against Dallas tomorrow. Expect that we'll hear an update on Rantanen then. He did travel home with the team, and it doesn't appear as if this is the worst-case scenario, thankfully. We'll hear what the Avalanche have to say, but the preliminary news is it's not as bad as it could have been, thankfully. The other injury we've been watching, and so have the Canucks, is that of Thatcher Demko. They're in uh, L.A. tonight. Demko can come off the LTIR as of now. He was eligible today, but the Canucks know, as Lou Lamorello says, when you have time, you use it. They have time. They will use it. Wouldn't be surprised, Ron, if we don't see him in a game for around at least another week. Uh, by the way, Philadelphia Flyers losing 4-1 to one after 40 minutes to Columbus. Uh, Islanders are up on a Noah Dobson goal. one nothing in their game as the races go on. So you had a great piece with Michael Grange on Sportsnet.ca, Elliot. It was involving Keith Pelly and ownership in flux with uh, Bell and Rogers and Larry Tannenbaum. So just tell us about Keith's dream job. Well, first of all, I'll reiterate again that Michael deserves the lion's share of the credit because he did the most of the work on the story. But, you know, basically what's going to happen here is that Bell, Rogers, and Larry Tannenbaum have had this partnership for almost 30 years now, and it's been uh, it, it's been a big uh, it's been a big success for them in terms of building an organization and making it valuable and some success on the court and Toronto FC and the Maple Leafs still battling for it. And what's going to happen is, not this summer, but next summer, there's the option to open up a window to buy out Larry Tenenbaum once he turns 80. And it's a long process. It's going to take probably about a year to do. But it is expected that they're going to do it. And, you know, Keith Pelly comes in right now. And, you know, Masai Ujiri and Brendan Shanahan, for the last few years, they had a lot of freedom. Uh, Masai Ujiri only dealt with Tenenbaum. Brendan Shanahan was always a big believer and letting the CEO know what he was thinking. But if he wanted to speak to the board by himself, he had the power to do it. And, you know, we've both worked for Keith Pelly. We know Keith Pelly. Um, he gives you the chance to be successful. He's not afraid to spend money. He wants to be successful. But he's going to be now the person in between the people who run the Raptors and the Leafs and the board. So I think everyone's very curious here to see what is there, what it's all going to mean. Look, I, I think this. If everybody's successful, I don't know that you're going to see change. But if there's not the success the organization wants, we could see change. Well, it's interesting because he's the president of a core four. Let's call TFC, the Argos, and of course the Raptors and Leafs as the core four. But there's yeah. many other elements to MLSE. Uh, they've gone up to an $8 billion franchise for one nine. Uh, they had public faces like Tim Laiwiki, like Richard Petty. He's now the guy. He knows the dream and the dream job is the cup. Yep. And now Scotty always said, my owners invested. That was the key thread in 1,200 plus wins and nine cups. What can you do in a hard cap world if you're Keith Pelly to achieve the dream? Well, you can still invest and spend on a lot of other things off the ice, and the Maple Leafs do that. Like, they spend on a lot of things off the ice, and I don't think that's going to change. I, I don't think that's going to change. But does he have all. a new wrinkle? Because they've done it, as you say. Scouting, it's an endless list. Can, can you, he, you has know he got him. an idea? You know him. He's got ideas. He's been very careful this week in his media appearances. He doesn't want to rock the boat. He doesn't want to do anything crazy while he first arrives. But you know him. He's what you also some. wrote, he's a five handicap. Is that true? Uh, Michael wrote that. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he's the best uh, golfer among us, which is uh, interesting news. Kevin, your challenge is on. 